Now there's a heck of a lot of photographers out there that are just looking at using Lightroom's masking tools as ways to brighten or darken certain parts of the image. And while that is certainly a nice way to use masks, there is a lot more advanced uses, especially for those of you wildlife, landscape, and even portrait photographers out there that I wanna show you in today's video. Now this video hopefully covers some advanced techniques maybe that you haven't thought of or haven't used before, um, as well as combining masks, adding, subtracting, and then a few different workflows for workarounds and things that I like to do to kind of enhance the masking features and just enhance your Lightroom experience in general. That's what we're talking about in today's video. Let's not waste any more time. We'll jump right in there into Lightroom Classic here. Uh, this is the first image I'm working on. Now I'll show you, this is kind of probably the most basic thing that we're going to talk about um, within masking, but it is something that is maybe outside the box. A lot of people don't think about doing it this way. Um, because most people think of the masking tools as just offering the basic sliders when in reality, the masking tools allow you access of any slider that is offered in Lightroom. I think maybe any slider. Someone can fact check me there, but any slider that I've ever needed has been available in the masking tool. Now, I'll show you on this image, for example, the problem that I have here. So I want to adjust the color of these leaves um, because this is the raw file here. Now, they're kind of brownish yellow, and I want them to be more green. But as I do that, you can see it enhances all of these other areas here in the image. Now, I've adjusted the range to try and make that make a better selection, and it's just not doing what I want it to do. So I'm going to delete this swatch, and we are actually going to use the masking tool. Now, because this green is pretty isolated, it's relatively easy, we can just use something like the brush here, and we can just paint over just like that. Now, if we wanted to use uh, the mask for color range, we certainly could, but because we're going to use this point color tool, this is going to conceal uh, that color anyway, so there's not going to be any bleed over. You know, if, if I was just going to say, like, raise the exposure, obviously I would want to tone that color down. But because we're using point color where we're sampling a color, um, you'll see it is just going to affect this one particular area. Now I can adjust this color freely. You can see that it is only selecting this. It's not selecting the things down below. And now I can make this adjustment exactly how I want it. So kind of a, a little workaround way if, if you've got multiple of the same color in your image, but you just want to affect the color in one spot and not the whole image. Uh, but that is something that I'm doing actually pretty frequently because a lot of times there is matching colors in an image and I only want to select one particular area. Now, some of the most powerful adjustments in masking comes when you combine multiple masks, either by addition or subtraction. I'll show you how to do that on this next image here. So you can see there's already a good amount of light coming in from the background, probably enough, but let's say we wanted a little bit more light. This is always a great image to demonstrate on because there's already a little bit of light to begin with. So to add light, typically I'll use a radial gradient hit command minus just to zoom out. That's control minus on PC. Then I'll make this nice and soft. Now you want this to radiate basically from where the light would be in the image. So the light is coming from like somewhere up here. It's maybe a little bit skinnier, a little bit longer, somewhere like that. Now I'll go in and I will just increase the exposure. Maybe I'll warm the light up just a touch and maybe I'll go down and I will minus dehaze. Now that looks pretty good. We've added a little bit of light, but the problem is we've added it right on top of our subject. So it doesn't look realistic because in theory, the light should be behind the subject because we're seeing this light because we're seeing more atmosphere, but because the subject is really close to us, it should maintain that high contrast and it shouldn't have like atmosphere in front of it just like that. So we're going to use subtract. Now what subtract does is it removes from the mask from the basically from mask one, it's going to remove a certain area based on what we select. Now this image, very basic. What we can do here is just to select subject and it should select this moose pretty well. Now you can see just like that, it's done a good job. So this is our mask now when it combines these two. So it combined this radial grading we've made with a subject mask, which it's subtracted from just like that to create this. Now, if you need to do any touching up, um, which you'll see in Lightroom, a lot of times you will need to do, because as I toggle this off and on, you can see like this is a missed spot right here. You can simply go in and hit add and add with a brush make this nice and small, and you can decrease the feather to probably like 40 or so. I'd also recommend going in, dropping the flow somewhere around 10%, and then you can just paint that in little by little until it looks a little bit better. Now this is obviously pretty tedious, and hopefully you don't have to do this, but if Lightroom doesn't make a perfect selection of your subject, 
you may need to do that. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it on this image, but if you are going to print your photo, definitely consider doing something like that. But that's how you can combine masks together. Now, depending on your experience, you may or may not have used these before, but they're definitely more advanced tools, and that is going to be the color and luminance range masks. These make masks based on the color in your image or on the lightness values of your image. So if I go into the color range here, it will give me an eyedropper tool. Now I can select a color in my image. Let's say we wanted to increase the saturation of these rocks in the foreground. Maybe we'll adjust the temperature of the tint as well. Um, let's see. So we will click here on the rock. You can see anything that's white is selected. Anything that's black is not. So it's done a decent job. We can adjust the refine to make it more or less selective around the color that we have made. So for example, with refine at one, it's only going to select colors that are pretty much exactly the color that we clicked on. Whereas at 100, it's going to look outwards from that color and select similar colors. Um, so for this example, we probably want somewhere right in here. Now I am going to combine this because I just want to increase the saturation of these rocks in the foreground. I don't want to increase the saturation up here, but I can easily remove this from my image with a brush. Really, I just want to make sure I have a nice solid edge right here because where the edge would be, that's where you would have a hard time uh, kind of painting in with that brush. So somewhere like that looks good. Now you can go in, a lot of times I like to just apply the adjustment first. You can see that looks pretty good. We can even warm up those rocks a little bit, make them a little more red. Maybe we wanna increase the exposure just a touch, just like that. Now we can toggle that. So I'm liking what I'm seeing from these rocks, uh, maybe a little bit more contrast, but what I'm not liking is what's happening up here. Now we're gonna do that same thing, just we're gonna subtract and we are going to subtract a brush. Now brush is the easiest way to do this. We'll wanna change our settings back um, from what they were in the last image back to 100 feather then we will just paint this out now you can see this is what we just painted with the brush and it's subtracting so it's subtracting that white area from this mask ultimately resulting in this so if you wanted to go in you know you can be as um, selective as you want you can refine this as much as you want but somewhere like there gets me exactly what I'm after. Um, and you can combine this with as many brushes as you need. You can add, you can subtract. So many different options here in terms of what you can do. Uh, if you're not selecting enough color range, you can even add and do another color range and select a different but similar color so it selects both. Now one limitation you have is with the luminance range, which honestly is not my favorite tool. And I will show you why. It definitely works on some images if you want to do something like, say, select the very brightest spots in the sky maybe you want to just tone them down but you can see already it introduces banding really early and you can adjust the feather make it a little bit softer but I mean at that point we're almost selecting the whole image when we do that so it's really hard to select just one small spot now when you go in here and you do a luminance range selection. Say we wanted to bring up the darks in the image. This would be better suited to do in Photoshop. I'll show you why. So we're gonna select the darkest parts of the image. We're just gonna move this around so that we have a good selection there of the darks, bring this up. I mean, we can bring it almost all the way up to there to get all the foreground, but let's avoid having some of the sky. Now, problem is you go in with your exposure and you bring this up and you know, even once you get to here, if you zoom in, you'll see everything looks really bad in the foreground because of our mask, because of how we're bringing up the exposure. Whereas, you know, if you were just doing this globally, everything would not look quite so bad. So that's something that's a little bit better suited for a luminosity mask. There is a little bit more, a few more powerful options in Photoshop when it comes to making luminance selections, doing a little bit more feathering and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. Don't overwork it, um, but also don't be afraid to use the luminous range selection to just do little minor things, um, but you can't do anything major like this. Now let's put together all the pieces. We'll wrap it up on one image where we're gonna put a bunch of what we just learned together into one. Now there is gonna be some new stuff here, so don't tune out quite yet. Now in this particular image, what we're going to do is make these background rocks a little bit more orange. They were definitely more orange out there, but because of the light, you know, the light wasn't amazing. There wasn't sunlight or reflected light. The rocks are appearing a little bit dull and a little bit yellow. So let's go about fixing them. So when you're working with an image like this, 
the first question would be, how can we make a good selection of the rocks? You know, there are a few different colors. Uh, some is darker, some is lighter. We don't want to select the stuff down here, but you do have one option that actually might work pretty well, and that's going to be a landscape. Landscape is going to allow you to select between natural ground, uh, vegetation, mountains. A lot of times there's also sky. Uh, you have a lot of different options. But essentially what I want to do here, I think, is select natural ground because you can see that's going to mask out the trees, which is the most important thing. So we'll click natural ground and create a mask. Now, this obviously needs quite a bit of refinement. But one thing that you can do uh, rather than trying to work with the overlay here is just start to make your adjustments. So I want to warm and magenta tint and increase the saturation of the rocks. Now that's already looking pretty good, but the problem is I don't want, you know, what's going on in the foreground here is not my favorite. You'll see that like these trees are a weird color. Uh, so we want to get rid of that. So we actually don't want any, you know, I don't mind these, this dirt being kind of gray in color and this dirt being kind of gray in color. So we are going to subtract. Now we'll subtract with the brush. Uh, we can reduce the feather just a little bit and then just paint this in. You can see we can just get rid of that real quickly here. We can also zoom in, command plus on Mac, control plus on PC just to make this happen a little bit faster. Now, of course, I would probably spend a little bit more time doing this, but for the sake of this video, not too concerned. I also want to maybe get rid of that on the background of this uh, waterfall just a little bit, just to keep things a little bit realistic looking. Okay, now that's starting to look pretty good. That back wall is looking pretty good, but as I look to the top, I'm noticing, okay, all these green plants and everything, they are now yellow toned, which I don't want. We can go in again and hit subtract and we can subtract color range. Now we will select uh, the greenery on these trees just like that. You can see the selection there has done a pretty good job selecting the greens. Uh, we can even increase the refine a little bit to make that selection a little bit better. I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, we want maybe a little bit less just like that. Now you can see this is the selection that we're working with which is looking substantially better. Now to finish things off, we can just go in and make our further adjustments, anything we need to do. If we need to adjust the hue, uh, the saturation, temperature, 10, any of that, if we wanna add even a little bit of contrast to the rocks, we can. We could even go in with our point color tool, um, which is up here. Maybe I didn't like these bluish purples. I can just reduce the saturation there, increase the range. You can see the possibilities are just about endless, and these are just a few of the many ways that pro photographers are using these masking tools to really help take their images home. And the nice thing with these being in Lightroom is they are always fully, um, you can always go back and make adjustments later on. So if you decide, you know, this is uh, overcooked, you can go back in later and adjust these, you know, leave this image, come back the next day, make some more adjustments, and then go back into your masking tool here and decide what you want to change about it. So really, really highly customizable. But that pretty much covers what I wanted to talk about in today's video. Hopefully uh, this is kind of a short and sweet way introducing you to some of the more advanced techniques with masking. Uh, once you understand everything that I've covered in this video, you pretty much have mastered masking. Then it just comes down to learning what workflows you want to use, what techniques you want to apply and everything like that. Now, if this video was helpful for you, let me know down below in the comments. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Help me to continue to grow and provide you weekly videos, helping you improve at photography. Um, otherwise, my name is Austin James Jackson. Really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time.